2 Samuel chapter 15, we left David on the run from Solomon. Uh, we discussed those issues, and right now in verse 19, we're taking David, he's on the run. And he's going to come across some characters. Good. Then said the king, uh, verse 17, the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, all the Pelethites, and all the Giddites. 600 men which came after him from Gath. That's Philistine. That's where Goliath was born. You know how Gath keeps going, keeps showing up with David, the giant. Something about that. What? I don't know. Passed on before the king. Then said the king to Itali, the Gideon, Wherefore goest thou also with us? So here's this man, Itali. He's, he's, he's coming with David. They're on the run. What are you doing here? Return to thy place and abide with the king. That'd be Solomon. David's acknowledging, not Solomon again, Absalom. Because David has already been foretold by God this was all going to happen. So David is relying on God. And God has already told David, listen, I'm giving you a sure house, but you're going to pay you're going to reap what you sow. And David's like, go back to that king. And we're going to see later on the hope that David has in a hopeless situation. Abide with the king, for thou art a stranger. He's a Gentile. And also in exile. And that's someone who's been cut off. That's the first time that word exile shows up. Because listen, you know, you have no business being here. You're on the run. You don't need to be on the run with me. You're just adding double. I don't really know who you are. I don't know if I want you with me. I don't know if I can trust you. Whereas thou camest but yesterday. I only seen you since yesterday. Should I this day make thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither I may? Return thou and take back thy brethren. So there's other people with him. Mercy and truth be with thee. Yeah, don't. But tell I answer the king and said, As the Lord liveth, Jehovah, the Jewish God, not the not uh, the Philistine God, and as my Lord the king liveth, obedience to God, Jehovah, to obedience to David, that's under God, of Israel, the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there, also will thy servant be. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. I didn't know. Until he answered the king and said, As the Lord liveth, oath. And as my lord the king liveth, oath. Surely in what place my lord the king shall be. Now that's the answer to what verse 20. David says, I'm going up and down, going here and there. I don't know where I'm going. And Tali says, well, wherever you go, I will go. That's Ruth. That's a, that's a Gentile. You see the church age in Tali following Jesus Christ, a type of David. And wait till you see how close it's going to get in a few more verses. If you don't get excited and you don't wet your spiritual pants, you need to get right with God. So wherever the king goes, even though I don't belong there, I'll go wherever you go by the oath of God, Jehovah, and by David, the type of Jesus Christ. Where, what place my Lord the King shall be, whether in death or in life. So where I live for the Lord, I'm going to live for the Lord. Whether I die, I'm going to die in the Lord. I'm with the Lord. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee, the Bible says. Even there also will thy servant be. Listen, I'm not with Jesus today, but the Bible says, I am seated in heavenly places. I am there with, with Jesus. Even though I'm a dead dog without hope, growing up with, with Gentile gods as this man has in, in, in his Gittite land. And David said to Attila, I go and pass over. Go over and preach Go and preach the word, Mark 16 says. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And until I did get, I passed over, and all his men, so he brought people with him, 
to David and all the little ones that were with him. So he brought his family, he brought others. That's a picture of Cornelius. When Peter shows up, man, he's got the whole family and friends sitting there in the living room with the dining room. Peter walks in like, whoa, I thought I was just supposed to be here for Cornelius. He's got a whole group of people. And all the country wept with a loud voice. You ever hear the people of the Orient or the Middle East countries moan and groan in sorrow? It's loud. It's, I don't mean Hollywood, but it's dramatic. It is serious. I guarantee this was probably heard off miles away. And all the people passed over. And the king also himself passed over to Brook Kidron. This is between Jerusalem and Mount Olives. David is going east, away from Jerusalem. And east to west is not a particular good direction in the Bible. It's usually west to east. But David, rebellion against God. And rebellion would drive you the wrong way. And all the people pass over toward the way of the wilderness. And we picture Revelation 12, that wilderness. The Jews are, a few Jews are leaving Jerusalem because of Absalom. And that's towards the seven years of the tribulation period. There are Jews, very few in number, that are going to leave because of the Antichrist. And Lo Zadok, that is the high priest under David and under Solomon. Zadok also. He's of the family of Aaron. He's a Levite and he's a priest. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And when you see Zadok, this is the high priest of the high priest. This would be the one that would go in the most holy place twice the Day of Atonement, that one day of the year. And all the Levites were with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God. There's the Ark. David brought it into Jerusalem and put it in the curtains. Zadok and his sons are bringing it to David. I thought quite interesting in our Ezekiel study, if we ever get to that, Lord willing. It looks like where we left off in chapter 10, when you read what Babylon took from Jerusalem, you don't see the ark. It looks like that moment in Ezekiel 10, looks like that's when the ark leaves, I was thinking, when we were reading that as a family. The glory of God departed out of the temple. And what was the glory of God? It's that ark. Zadok and the priest and the Levites, David, God is with you. Here's the ark. Now we don't have a box today. We do not have a thing that's a God today. We have Jesus Christ the Son. So when you see a religion have a box, has a thing, has a bone, has a hair, has a tablet, has this, they're stealing it from the Old Testament. They're stealing it from the Jews. And they set down the ark of God. And Abiathar went up, that's the other priest. This is the one that came to David after Saul killed them all. Abiathar went up unto all the people had done passing out of the city. Passing out of the city. That was weird. So what follows the people is the ark. And they all pass over to the brook Kidron. And the king said to Zadok, Now watch the faith and trust in God. Carry back the ark of God into the city. Don't have it follow me. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. Now that's a remarkable statement by David. He tells him, carry that back, put it back in the curtains. Put it back in the, the tabernacle that I built of the curtains. And if God is pleased with me, if God will show me favor, I will be back in Jerusalem as Jesus Christ will be back in Jerusalem. But look what David says. And show me both it 
How's the only way that, that a man can see that ark if it's in the tabernacle? You got to go to the holy place. You got to go to the most holy place. And David says, I will see that ark again. David has got priestly rights and king and a prophet that not very few men have in the Bible. Moses was a priest. He was a prophet, but he was not a king. Aaron was a priest. He was a prophet, but he was not a king. David is king, prophet, and priest. Jesus, king, prophet, and priest. He says, if God will show me favor, I'm going back to Jerusalem. You don't need to bring the ark with me. I will. And it's like the dead boy. I can't go to the boy. I mean, I can't bring that boy back, but I will go to him. I am on the run. Bring the ark back, and if God's pleased with me, I will go back to Jerusalem. And the king said also unto Zadok, the priest, Art, now th art not thou a seer? So Zadok is a priest, and he's a prophet, but he's not a king. 26? Skip and say. But if he, is, but if he God, does say, I have no delight in thee, David. In other words, God's angry with me. He's done with me. Behold, here am I. Let him do to me as it seems good unto him. Now that's a bold statement. And I have seen men make that statement foolishly. David's not making a foolish statement. He's relying on the promises of God. That his house forever will have a man to sit on that throne. God has already told him that this would happen. What David is relying on when he makes this statement is he's relying on the word of God that God spoke to him through Nathan and through his own vision of God himself. David does have a kind of sense, even though in this turmoil, he knows that God has his favor. You just got to go through some trials and tribulations. You got to do some reaping of sowing. God already told him that. So he has great faith in God. The king said also to Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer, again, priest and prophet, Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimenaz, thy son, and Jonathan, the son of Abiathar. That was a second Jonathan with David. So he sends the priest back with the ark. And I wonder if those two sons are the ones that are carrying the ark. Because it took two men to carry. See, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness until there come word from you to certify me that word shows up there for the first time. And the only other time is Acts 1.12. And it's quite interesting as we go to Acts 1.12. I may have that mark wrong. I may have the wrong word mark. All of it. Well, we're going to see the word all of it. That's where we're actually. We'll go to Acts 1.12 now. I got the wrong one. All of it. But Acts 1.12. Jesus Christ is talking with his disciples. He's ascended to the Father, to be at the right hand of the Father. Two angels show up and say, why are you guys looking up? Verse 20, 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and as he went up before, two men stood before them. Wasn't there just two men that David addressed was Zadok? Get the numbers in white apparel. Those maybe the two white, those men the two men in white that showed up to Mary at the tomb. But, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing? Only place that word shows up, into heaven. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as you have seen him go David is going into heaven David's not going to heaven in the story where we're at but David is leaving Jesus just left 
Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. That's the word, and we're going to see in Second Samuel, which is from Jerusalem about a Sabbath day journey. Uh, it's about a little under five thousand feet. They had a particular range that they could walk. Remember, they gave Jesus a hard time. They were walking on the Sabbath. So we learn how far Alva is from Jerusalem, about 5,000 feet. This is where David's going. Now back in 2 Samuel, it says, See, I tarry in a plain in the wilderness, until there come word from you to certify me. I got the wrong mark there. Zadok, therefore, in a fire fire, carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem. The disciples went back to Jerusalem, Acts chapter 1. And they tarried there. The disciples tarried in Jerusalem. Till the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2. David's on the run. I'm not going to say Jesus is on the run, but both David and Jesus has left Jerusalem. They are in the same place. This is the same place where Jesus ascended and the disciples witnessed it. Zadok therefore and Biophar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem and they tarried there. And David went up, look at the wording, by the ascent of Mount Olivet. Did it not say that Jesus ascended? Don't we call that the ascension of Jesus? The ascent. David and Jesus, <laughs> David, a type of Jesus Christ, at Mount Olivet, ascends. David's ascending the mount. The only difference is there are no disciples, but he sends the priest back. The disciples go back and wept. The disciples are weeping because Jesus is now gone. And he's not coming back to the rapture, and they don't see Jesus and they die. And the next time they see Jesus when he calls up the dead bodies. And as he went up, he had his head covered. And he went barefoot the first time that word showed up. Took off his sandals. And all the people that was with him covered every man his head. Like Jesus. They're in mourning. They're in sorrow. And they went up weeping as they went up and that, that's the disciple they're weeping as they're going back to jerusalem and one told david saying as his is among the conspirators only time that word shows up he's conspiring against david as absalom's already conspired against david with absalom and david said "O oh lord I pray thee, turn the counsel of the fifth bell into foolishness. That's the first time that word shows up. And you don't want to be a fool in the Bible. He says, let that counsel that Asaphil gives to Solomon, um, Absalom, excuse me, again. Let it be fool. Let it be foolish. Let it be foolishness. Not a fool. Not foolish. Foolishness. And it came to pass that when David was come up to the mount to the to the top of the mount. That's where Jesus and the disciples were. The very spot, Acts chapter one, is where David is on the run away from Absalom. Isn't that interesting? It would have been funny. I, 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 I maybe tongue in cheek. It would have been funny. If David wrote there. I David was here, and they're looking at it as Jesus ascended. I don't know. I don't think so, but, but there's the same location. How the Bible brings you back. And I wonder if the disciples, when they read the, the Old Testament, I wonder if they ever read this. And came, Hey, wait a minute, that sounds familiar. Where he worshipped God. The very spot that Jesus was. He worshipped God. He's probably thanking God for getting away. He's probably asking God for mercy. Behold, Hushai, the Archite, 
came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. He's in sorrow for David. He is mourning for David. Unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. I don't need any more burden. Now this is a good this is one of David's friends. He has another purpose for for uh Husha, Hushia. He's going to make him a spy. He's going to make him a representative. He's going to be the eyes of David. But well, David doesn't know what's going on. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, and he won't. But I will be thy servant, O king. As I have been with thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant, that thou mayest that thou mayest thou that thou then mayest thou for me defeat that defeat defeat. That the only other place that shows up is seventeen fourteen. Some of my markings are all the crowds of the word. There's only two places in the Bible that shows up. Chapter 17, verse 14. The council of Ephesus. So, <coughs> so I want you to go back. I want you to swear, swear allegiance to Absalom. As you would for me. And Ithahel is going to give some counsel to Absalom. And I want you to do something that will defeat that counsel that I just asked God for it to turn into foolishness. He knows that Athahel will tell Absalom something that will defeat David himself. And Hushai, go back and assert that authority of that counsel. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok, don't you have the priest there? The priest of God. So evidently, Hushai, the archetype, he is a follower of God, the God of David, because those are his priests. I am referencing you back to those priests, the intelligence of David. And a by far the priests. Aren't they not going to be there? Yes, they are. Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou hast heard, that thou shalt hear, of the king's house. You tell me what's going on. You tell me what Absalom is going to do. You tell me what Ephesothel tells him to do. You tell me the tactics. I want you to use Zadok and Abiathar the priest. So David is putting a hold, a spy in the land so he can get intelligence on what to do and what not to do. Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priest. And if you are in that castle, you are in the realm of Absalom, and you take off, they're going to think suspicious because they know you love me. They know that you love God. They know your absence would prove something's wrong. So you've got to go to God's priest and tell Zadok, this is what I heard. This is what's going to happen. Behold, they have there with them two sons, Ahimenaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. All right, tell Zadok. Zadok is going to send his son. He's going to send Abiathar's son, and they will report to me what you have told Zadok. Again, it's military intelligence. And you shall send unto me everything that thou can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Again, we're setting up the Antichrist. David's away from Jerusalem. The Antichrist is going to come into Jerusalem. That, uh, 
Husha, he'd be a type of the Holy Spirit reporting back to God. This is what I've heard. This is what's going on down there. So we got more interesting coming up.